Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons. And I'm Carly Bird. Week 10. We made it to week 10. And with only 31 days until Halloween when this episode comes out, um, we're going to give you a really good story tonight, and we're going to keep it short, sweet, to the point. At the end of the episode, we have some announcements on some contests and giveaways. Uh, the two things we're going to do before we get into tonight's story is, number one, Carly, what are we drinking? We are drinking a delicious sweet red wine that comes from Pennsylvania called Bella Barrel mm. Tasters Select. It is absolutely fantastic. It's a very sweet wine, but you know, I like a sweet wine. So it's Tommy's favorite. Since I'm presenting tonight, I get to pick the drink. Mm -hmm. Number two that we're going to be talking about is the big announcement of the mural. It's done. As it's done. you can see. We have finally um, got to the point where we can reveal what I've been working on for basically months at this point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I have a few more additions I would like to add, but no rush on those. And I just wanted to share this with everyone. It looks absolutely fantastic. Thank you. So I'm presenting for tonight's story, and I found a really, really fun one online. Um, this is The House in the Woods. So it's a, it's a creepy story about ghosts, about a house that is possibly haunted. Mm -hmm. The ghost may or may not be there. We're going to find out. Carly, you ready for this? Yeah. Time for the tale of the house in the woods. I've always believed in ghosts. I don't really consider myself a spiritual person, but I had a respect for the paranormal. However, my sister, Kayla, on the other hand, was obsessed with the unnatural. She's what you call a goth. She even had her hair buzzed off on one side and always had on black lipstick with black clothes. I'm kind of your average kid, just a nerd really. I even wear glasses to prove it. Anyway, the night I'm talking about really made me a believer in the paranormal. It all started on a Friday night. My friends Bradley, Sean, and Cassidy came over to chill. We all hung out in my basement watching a horror movie, including my sister, who just so happened to be only a year younger than me. It's a movie we've all seen hundreds of times. I think it might have been The Shining, but I don't remember. No one really was paying attention to the movie. We were all trying to find something fun to do while Bradley packed a blunt. On this particular Friday, not a lot was going on. Not that a bunch of high school teens' lives that were all exciting anyway. It's not like our lives were exciting anyway. As we were throwing out ideas, it was Cassidy who mentioned the house. Deep in the woods, behind my house, there was a house that was thought to be haunted. It was an old abandoned boarding house that was once an orphanage where a lot of kids went missing. Ooh. No one really knows what happened to them, but some people speculate that one of the individuals that was the caretaker was a pedophile and would take them down to the basement where they would never be seen from again. Mm. Cassidy was the only one who thought we should go out there. My sister wanted to go even farther and have a seance. Of course, my sister had a Ouija board and wanted to see if we could talk to the dead souls who were murdered. Nah, that sounds stupid, Bradley said. It does sound stupid. Leave the Ouija board at home, Kayla. You're not mm -mm. into the whole, uh... Mm -mm. Nope. I believe in that stuff. They will talk back. They, they will talk back? They will. They'll use the Ouija board, they'll communicate, and then they'll kill you. Uh, I've actually never participated in a uh, seance, I haven't so. either, but I know not to. I... So what she's saying is... Guys, <laughs> for, <laughs> For this show, uh, we can't do that as an episode, right? <laughs> I've already put my foot down and said, no Ouija boards. We are not summoning a demon to this house. If we get enough people wanting us to do it, or if we get paid enough, 
Some things are not off the table. I'm just Paid saying. enough. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> Don't tell me you're not scared, Bradley, Cassidy asked. <laughs> Bradley scoffed. I'm not scared. I am, Sean said, as he cleaned his glasses. I think it'd be fun. It's got to be better than sitting here watching the same movie we saw a hundred times, Cassidy said, as she tr- as she ties up her blonde hair into a ponytail. Besides, it'd be a perfect opportunity to smoke that blunt you rolled. Fine, I'll do it, Bradley said. Kayla was ecstatic. Sweet. I'll go get my Ouija board. I know, I know. You're just like, nah, nah. F this noise. F Mm-mm. this noise. We, we followed Cassidy out through the woods. The hike was rather long. As Bradley s- sparked the blunt and passed it around, the sun started to dip below the horizon. As we finally arrived at the old beat-up boarding house, the windows were boarded up and everything seemed like it was only one storm away from falling apart. The paint was nearly worn off and most of the siding was rotten. I nearly choked at what I thought I saw in the window on the second floor. Everyone looked at me as I blinked and looked and took a double take. I I could have sworn I saw something in the window. Guys, did you not see that? Bradley thought I was just pulling their legs, but I swear I saw what I saw. It looked like a little girl. We all looked at each other before Cassidy was the first to head in. We should really be careful. This place doesn't look structurally sound, John said. (laughs) As soon as we headed inside, we all noticed that, that smell, that rancid odor. It smelled like rotten eggs mixed with meat that had been left out far too long. Let's find a good spot to do our seance, my sister said. Let's split up and look around, Cassidy said. Sean, we should stick together. Bradley, don't be such a wuss. I'm just being cautious, Sean said. I looked around in the living room, and I found an old frame photo of a group of people in it. There were at least ten people. None of them looked happy to be in the photo and most of them were kids. A sudden creak in the upstairs floorboard made everyone flinch. We should leave, Sean said. Fuck that, let's go see what that was, Bradley said. I agree, besides we've got strength in numbers, Cassidy said. How high are they right now? And I thought, I I thought, like if you get high, do you get like I get like you get cocaine, you get like all like angst and like ah, but and if you get drunk, I mean you kind of like get like belligerent and tough. Yeah. But I thought like weed didn't make you like oh let's go check it out. I thought it made you more like chill. Paranoid. It paranoid. Can, and stuff. It affects different people differently, but some people it makes them paranoid, and then some people it just makes them like just like chill out and relax. That's why it's medicinal. It's for people with like anxiety to just chill. But yeah. without like the alcohol, like if you drink alcohol, that helps some people chill, but then you have like a hangover afterwards, you know? Mm-hmm. The weed doesn't like give that to you. Uh, it's not supposed okay. to. Okay, 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 cool, cool. No, I have not smoked weed before. Dom doesn't, doesn't do drugs. Not against it. Obviously. Not against it. But I just don't do it. <laughs> Dom's like, I know what cocaine does. I know what cocaine does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen, sometimes you can't get to the the supplement store to get your pre-workout. And you got to do what you got to do to hit your next max rep. Okay, that's all I'm saying. (laughs) I know what cocaine is. (laughs) (laughs) I agree. We skipped some levels there. Gateway drug. (laughs) I agree. Besides, we got strength in numbers, Cassidy said. Reluctantly, we all followed them up the creaky stairs to find several rooms full of cobwebs and dust. Each room had several bunk beds. Bradley and Cassidy went into the room on the left. I was about to follow them when something caught my eye. I went into the room on the right, and as I walked inside, I noticed nothing out of the ordinary. There was a mirror attached to the wall, two bunk beds. They were, the bunk beds were long past sleepable. 
I walked over to the mirror. And as I looked at it, I let out a scream. I looked quickly behind me, but I saw nothing. I looked back at the mirror. I could have sworn I saw a face of a little girl with, with pitch black hair. <laughs> you okay? Sean asked as they all rushed into the room. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I just, I don't know, I said. What the fuck is that? Bradley shouted. We all whipped around to see what he was pointing at, but none of us saw anything. We turned back to Bradley, who was laughing hysterically. Gotcha. Hmm. Jokester. You're not funny, Kayla said as she stormed out the room. For some reason, I felt this chill, this cold chill, course through my veins. I couldn't shake it. The feeling that someone or something was watching us. And there was that smell. I followed everyone downstairs. It was Cassidy that discovered a door to the basement. Sean, I'm not going down there. Fine. You can stay up here all by yourself, Cassidy said, as she made her way down the stairs. Cassidy's got some balls. Yeah. Okay. She's got some balls. I need to smoke some of this weed, apparently. Because I would not have that courage. No, I'd be with Sean, 100%. Kayla was right behind her, followed by Bradley. I gave Sean a sympathetic look right, be right before going on after them. <laughs> Bye. Sean. <laughs> oh, fuck. And then he soon followed us down. Downstairs was a complete mess. Everyone pulled out their self cell phone flashlights to look around. There was a big bookcase filled with dusty old books that caught Kayla's attention. This is a this is as good as any to have your little seance, Cassidy said. Kayla pulled herself from the books from the books and took out her Ouija board and placed it on the table. We all grabbed a chair and gathered around it. Shh so how does this work, Cassidy asked. So basically, we all touch the plushette and ask the spirits or ghosts a question. The what? The plushette. So it's basically a wooden, it's a wooden piece that on the Ouija board, you, everyone puts their hands on. And it's a little wooden piece. I did not piece. know it was called that. Yeah. Plushette, which I think it is. Uh, P-L-A-N-C-H-E-T-T-E. Plushette? P-L-A-N? P-L-A-N-C. H E T T E. Planket? Planket? Plushette? I wouldn't. I am not good. <laughs> I wouldn't say ch for a C. Okay, listen. I was homeschooled. <laughs> That's. I've been drinking, and <laughs> words do things to me. You're going to call it combination. the wooden piece from here we'll on. We'll call out. it the wood, the plank. Yeah. I like plushette, though. Yeah. Planchette? Planchette? It sounds like a French, like, pasta. It makes you think of. Um, never mind. Keep going. <laughs> so, so basically, we all touched the plushette. No! <laughs> <Stop>! <laughs> we all touched the wooden block and asked the spirits or ghosts a question, and it'll answer your, it'll answer you using the board. It's not too complicated, Kayla said. We all shrugged and placed our hands on the little wooden plank with wheels and a hole it has a it has wheels on it and there's a hole to see the letter below oh okay okay does that make sense yeah, yeah i had to read that again the board with that said another nice drink of this nice red wine oh problem is i think this is our second bottle of the night so probably it's gonna get worse as i keep reading we all shrugged and placed our hands on a little wooden plank with wheels and holes in the middle so we could see the letters below the board itself had a yes on one side and a no on the other, along with the alphabet, a set of numbers, and the word goodbye on the bottom. Hmm. As we all had our hands on it, Kayla spoke out. Spirits, can you hear us? The, the plushette, the plank, started to move and I had a suspicion it was one of us it moved to the word yes 
we all looked at each other. Is there something you'd like to tell us? Kayla asked the spirit. It started to move again. First it bolted right to the letter F and then went straight to the U. Next it flicked over to the C and I knew where this was going as it settled on the K. <laughs> what? Followed by the letter O and then two Fs. Oh, okay. It, for people that cannot spell like me, um, that spelled fuck off. Okay. So no, now you know. Appreciate that. Seriously, Cassidy sighed. Not even the dead are that childish. So, so I would totally do that, by the way. If we, if we had to work. <laughs> it's like, will I get laid tonight? Maybe. No, that's hard. Uh, <laughs> I would totally do that. <laughs> suddenly, the plush. The, suddenly, it started to move again. We all looked at each other as it flickered to the word yes. Oop, I just said that part, sorry. The shit continued to move. It hit the word S. It hit the letter S, not the word S. It hit the letter S, then H, then E, followed by L before moving to F. Shelf. Shelf. Wait, the bookshelf? We all looked over at the bookshelf before, before we all looked at the bookshelf, then we looked back at each other. So what, Bradley said, it's just a bookshelf. The plank moved once more. It hit the letter B, then E, before going over to the H. Next, <laughs> next by the letter N, and lastly D. It wants us to look, wait, it wants us to look behind it, Kayla said. A chill went down all of our spines. We looked at each other simultaneously, and then we all got up and went over to the bookshelf. Bradley and I started to push it out of the way. As we did, we saw that there was a door behind it. Oh no. We all looked at each other with a gasp jaws. After a long moment of disbelief, Cassidy reached over and opened the door. It leads to a stairway that winds down to what seems like another level. Sean, I don't think we should go down there. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Sean. you, Sean. We all know what you think at this point. For once, I, for once, I kind of agree with him, Bradley said. We all jumped we all jumped as every door in the house behind the one in front of us slammed shut. We all looked at each other. Well, fuck it. Looks like we don't have any other choice, Cassidy said. How high are they to do this? this Did is not like even be like, oh, I'm just going to go open the door or see if it's locked. Um, Y'all need to get out of the house. This you don't just go deeper in for that door to close on you and then y'all will rot down in the cellar. This is like a Scooby-Doo routine. Yeah. Right? What the world is going on? Like, I get Kayla. Like, she's batshit. But everybody else should be like, have a little bit of common sense. Mm -hmm. Hello, that's, guys. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Oh, well. This, yeah. Well, let's see what happens here, guys. Well, fuck it. Looks like we don't have any other choice, Cassidy said. And without another word, she started to make her way downstairs. There's no way Bradley could be, be outbraved by a girl. So he went down after her, followed by Kayla, after she grabbed her Ouija board. Sean and I looked at each other. I shrugged and headed down after them, and I heard Sean follow. Upon arriving at the bottom of the stairs, we all stood there frozen in place. What we saw was beyond horrifying. What could have possibly been going on down here was beyond any nightmare. There was a long hall of rooms. There was a long hall of rooms. After peering in one of the after peering in one of them, we saw a bed with restraints mm -hmm. to the bedposts. We followed the hallway down. 
out to an opening. All of us gasped, and our jaws hung open as we saw cages filled with skeletons. They were small skeletons of what could only be children. There was a table. I gasped. I couldn't. There was a table with saws, pliers, restraints, sex toys, cameras, and all other devices that could only be used for one thing. Torture and sexual sadism. There were several doors that led elsewhere. We all looked at each other, wide-eyed. Suddenly, Caleb bolted over to a table. She set her Ouija board down before she picked up what looked like a picture album. She flipped through it before she threw it back on the table where she found it and threw up in a bucket nearby. What could she have seen in that album? The rest of us shared some eyebrow raises before Cassidy went to the album. As she scrolled through the album, as she, as she flipped through the album, sorry guys, this gets a little, yeah, so. As she, I can say this, as she looked through the album, the look on her face said it all. It was a look of pure horror and disgust. She slammed the book shut and set it back down. This time Bradley picked it open and opened it. What the fuck he yelled. We all looked at him as Cassidy shushed him. Everyone quickly looked around at what was going on. Pictures, macabre pictures of children being sexually tortured in different obscure ways. Dead bodies, people having it. I can't go on anymore. Everyone quickly looked around as if someone else was, was there with us. I quickly looked over his shoulder to find a picture so horrible it made my stomach clunch. I, I had to throw up again. There was, as we looked to the right, there was a kids who were changed, were chained up to beds without clothes on. Some kids were shown to be tortured where they lie. Is this what you wanted to show us? Carly asked. What? She's on the Ouija board. Kayla, you mean? I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, guys. This is just like a lot of this is heavy. When we got to the last page, there was a picture of a big metal table covered in blood with body parts screwing all over the place. Kayla, is this what you wanted to show us? A gas came from Cassidy, and we all looked at where she was staring. To our horror, the wooden piece on the Ouija board was moving. But no one was around it but Kayla. We all shuffled around to see what it was trying to say. It first went to H, and then an I, before moving to a D. A sudden chill started to sweep over my skin as the piece lastly landed on an E. We all looked at each other with fear in our eyes before a loud creak was heard from upstairs somewhere. Both Kayla and Cassie clamped their hands over their mouths, smothering their screams. We all looked around before bolting into separate rooms. I was alone in one of the rooms, with a bed with shackles as I listened to the creaks coming down the steps. Creak. Creak. As the steps grew louder, as the steps grew closer. I was so scared. I was sweating profusely. That's when I turned around, and to my horror, there was a little girl sitting on the bed. 
She held up one finger to her mouth. I wanted to scream, but nothing came out. I should probably save my life. The little girl looked at me and whispered, Shh. It sounds like someone was walking around upstairs. From the sound of it, they were opening doors. We heard them go up a set of stairs. We also heard a loud slam, followed by a scraping sound, like, like wood sliding against wood. There was a sudden movement of footsteps as the person moved back down the stairs. We heard them try to open a door. By now my heart was, clamp was just pumping so loudly, I thought for sure everyone could hear it. The little girl on the bed just stared at me as she kept her finger tightly pressed against her sealed lips. She seemed to have a faint glow about her. Her skin was, was as pale as a bleached wall and she wore what seemed like a dirty pillowcase. My heart sped up as I heard a loud crash and suddenly footsteps came down a set of stairs. I thought I was going to piss my pants as the footsteps clambered around the basement. I knew it was only a matter of seconds before they make their way down the secret stairwell. Mm -hmm. Knowing full well that none of us closed the bookcase behind us. There was a long pause for what seemed like an eternity. I felt like I was having a panic attack as that little girl just stared at me. Her face was expressionless, her fingers still attacked, still pressed up against her closed lips. Suddenly, the footsteps made their way back up the stairs. We heard them walk out of the house. I looked back to find the girl was gone. My heart was racing so fast, I thought I was going to die of a heart attack. I heard a noise outside the room I was in. I knew it had to be my friends. I, I walked out to find Casey taking pictures of everything with her phone, including that photo album. What are you doing that for? Bradley asked. Someone needs to know about all of this. I'm taking these pictures to the police, she said. Are you crazy? They'll know we trespassed. We'll get in trouble. Okay, if you find that shit, like a, 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 a satanic pedophilia sex album. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think they're going to be to like, bring it to the police. Oh, I think this is even worse that you guys were here. Right. Right. Someone needs to know about this, and I'm taking these pictures to the police. She, she said, "Are you crazy? They'll know we're trespassing. We'll get in trouble." Bradley said. <laughs> How She's old are these kids? Well, we'll get in trouble about this. And I mean, the, the fuck murder dungeon. Sounds like middle school or something. Cassidy, these children deserve justice. And I'm getting out of here with all this stuff. Amen, girl. Wait, Cassidy said, grabbing his arm. I'm sorry. Um, Bradley, I'm getting the hell out of here. Wait, Cassidy said, grabbing his arm. What? He asked. We can't leave yet. Whoever was here still might be outside waiting for us she said she's right i don't think whoever came into the house was someone we wanted to run into are you gonna just wait there all night i don't i don't know what, what would you do would you wait there all night uh first of all i wouldn't be in that situation but just to play devil's advocate I would send everyone that I know that was not with me my exact location, send them the pictures, and say, call 911. Yes, yeah, send, send that shit out now. Just so, so somebody's have... coming to me as I'm trying to get out. Plus, at that point, people know where you are. There's a chain. They can't, like, get rid of that text very easily once you send it. Right. Like, that information's out there. Right. Blast it. Go Facebook mm -hmm. Live. Facebook Live. Do it. Facebook, face. Let's Facebook Live this shit. <laughs> I mean, not that that's appropriate, but if you want to make it out alive, that might be your best bet. Yeah, like and subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to pull a Logan Paul. She's right. I don't think whoever came into the house was someone we want to run into. That girl definitely didn't think so either. 
Kayla tapped my shoulder and pointed. I looked over to see the the wood piece moving again on the Ouija board. Mm. Look, look, look. She got out. We all we all ran over and circled around the Ouija board. The blanket swiveled over and came over top a G, then an O, before moving to an N, and then another O. Then it went over top a W. Go now. Moving to the word goodbye. Go now, Cassidy Mouth. Well, you heard it. Let's get the fuck out of here. Kayla grabbed the board and the blanket, and we all scrambled back up the stairs to find our path blocked. The boat case had been moved to block the stairs somehow. Knew it. They're trapped. That must have been what the noise was. It somehow moved back to cover the gap. Was it the girl? Bradley and I managed to push it out of the way before we scrambled back up the stairs. That's when I saw a photo again of all those people. It had been moved to the doorway. I looked at it closely, and that's when I saw her. The little girl I was in the little girl was in the front of the photo. The little girl that I saw. Her sad and fearful expression said it all. Kayla tugged on my arm, and I grabbed the photos and left with them. I looked one last, I took, I took one last look at the house and could barely make out the girl in the upstairs bedroom staring down at us. She waved with a sad expression on her face. And then I turned and I ran. We all sprinted back to my house as fast as possible. Shaking, all of us not knowing what to say. The next morning, Kayla, Cassidy, and Sean and I went into the police station, and Cassidy showed them the pictures she took with her phone. Bradley wouldn't come with us. We fully admitted to trespassing, but fortunately, no charges were placed. No fucking shit. Duh. The police later investigated the house, and the story broke the news not long after that. They called it the Orphanage of Horrors. Mm. We still have no idea who entered the house after us. One night, a few weeks later, my, si my same friends were over, and we were all outside smoking a blunt. When I looked over at, at the woods, and I froze, I saw the little girl standing at the edge of the woods. She was crying, but she had a smile on her face. She waved at me and then disappeared into the woods. I haven't seen her face since. I like to think she found some resemblance of peace. And to this day, after that evening, I do believe that ghosts exist. And that was the tale of the house in the woods. That was terrifying. I did not like that story. That was creepy, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I did. The story has a little bit more detail of the uh, sexual sadism. So I didn't go into all that because I don't think our podcast is ready for that stuff. Um, there's a lot more details in there. So I'm sorry if I was like really jumping. It was like, is this good words to say? Because this is like, it's macabre. It's beyond macabre. Um, I like this story a lot. I really did. It was not just the intensity. It's also kind of blending different aspects of the supernatural with real sadism and yeah. things that people do. Yeah. Um, because again, we're not going to bring it up here, but there are serial killers that definitely did things like this. Oh, yeah. And the fact that... That's what makes it even more horrifying. Yeah. Like, I was getting literal chills while you were reading that story because it's just it's just such a dark, like, horrible, horrible feeling of knowing that this kind of stuff did, does exist, and we don't know what's going on, you know? No, the, you, you don't know what's going on, and... I, I just, I do believe, I believe in ghosts. 
especially like trauma that can mm-hmm. create a place where the souls like can't find peace. Right. And you see this a lot with like example would be Amityville horror, um, which is a classic example or um, there's one asylum that spoilers is going to be an episode someday that a lot of bad things happen in a small area. Mm-hmm. And you have to believe that people that die that way, that if that kind of trauma that don't get peace, it, I, to me, it just makes logical sense that they can't find that everlasting rest, yeah. especially something as horrible as that. Yeah. Like, oh, that was a good story to kind of get us prepped for the Halloween season. I thought though. Yeah, definitely. Um, True horror right there. Yeah. It, it yeah. Just the, the whole idea of, I don't know, just not only the spirits, that side of it, but then like the real monster was the person. And we talked about yeah. that with Jeff the Killer. Mm-hmm. It's like the scariest monster are us or people. And the idea like the ghost was kind of spooky, but the real terror was what people did. I was going to mention that. I actually appreciated how the ghost in the story was almost the good guy. Well, yeah, because she was tortured. Like, remember the, the lips? She said to be quiet. She didn't want them to be discovered. Right, I know, but I'm saying yeah. she was the good guy, and I thought that was interesting twist on you. You know, usually I feel like when you think of spirits, they're evil spirits, and they're coming to get you. Mm-hmm. Whereas this spirit, they just wanted, um, they wanted to be freed, and they wanted people to know their story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, yeah, and this is also a good way to advocate for Ouija boards, and that Ouija boards can actually be used for good. And I don't know why people like Supernatural, the Ghostbusters, have not used a Ouija board to actually help the dead. You see, you're all worried about like someone being possessed, but you might be able to talk to somebody and help somebody out. I'm just saying there is a positive role for Ouija boards, and I'm going to advocate for pro Ouija boards as a oh, way of helping. Are you? Yeah, are you? I'm pro Ouija board now because right. of the story. Well, Carly's against Ouija boards. So are you for pedophiles then? No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you have every four Ouija boards. There you go. I just set it up. Excuse me? Yeah, you got to be pro Ouija board or or you're going to side with that sadistic fuck or however many there were that did that to the kids. I feel um, targeted right now. Uh, Hashtag. Um, Anyway, that was the story. Loved it. Now, we do have a couple of announcements before to finish off the episode. Uh, Carly, did you want to get into those announcements here? Yeah, we just have uh, one announcement left to wrap up the episode. Basically, we are truly truly looking for feedback we need some positive negative feedback let us know does our audio suck would you prefer we switch up the lighting let me know what you think of my mural and to incentivize all of you we are going to give a ten dollar amazon gift card to the first five people that's right Mm. up to fifty dollars who contact us and leave an iTunes review. So starting when this episode releases on September 30th, you have from then until October 28th at midnight to leave a review on Apple iTunes. The first five reviews will receive a $10 Amazon gift card. Then we will pick also a grand prize winner that will just be randomly drawn so if you're not one of the first five, no big deal. You still have a chance of winning a prize. And how much is that prize? That one's going to be for $50. For $50. So basically, just comment. So leave a, leave a, a review. You have a great chance of getting something. Yep, leave a review. You have a chance to win something. If you're not one of the first five, you still have a chance to win something. But then we also have another one. The same deal. S- same, same deal, deal, but it's a little different. And this is what, what it is. We want ideas from you guys. We want some topic ideas. So... The first five people to email the show will receive a $10 Amazon gift card. Just give us an idea for what you want to hear us talk about. And then we will pick a grand prize winner and they will receive a $50 gift card to Amazon. And you don't have to be one of the first five to win the grand prize. You just email in a good idea. Exactly. Again, our email address is spiritsandghoststories at gmail.com. Spirits and Ghost Stories at gmail.com. And again, this will be in the episode description. We will also post this on our Facebook and our Instagram page as well. Yep. So, yep. The ending date where we choose the winners is October 28th. At by midnight. By midnight on October 28th, 
uh, we will then make our determination on that. So again, you know, just trying to get the community involved. I think this will be a great little thing to do before Halloween to see how many of you guys are uh, actually listening and uh, want to get involved in the show. So that was a great story. Um, this, this is a great, this is a great way to start the Halloween season because when this debuts, it will be the last day of September going into the greatest season ever, which is the Halloween season guys. Woo-hoo. So everyone from us here, my name is Thomas Aarons. I'm Carly Bird. And this was Spirits and Ghost Stories. Bye guys. See ya.